and Ned, uh, as you uh, as you have been working as a management consultant for a long time now, so what type of challenges do you face in your job as a management consultant, and what skills do you think are required to overcome those situations successfully? Um, so something that I am uh, something that I am good at. Uh, that I think I use on a, on a very regular basis is uh, what I refer to as marshalling resources. So uh, it's kind of a military term, but uh, getting getting the things in place, getting the different pieces of the puzzle in together to make something happen and come to fruition, uh, rather than simply contributing my piece and you know, and then calling it a day and, and logging off for the day. Um, I, I, you know, I have talked to primarily military veterans, but um, I've talked to a lot of people that are looking to get into management consulting or just, you know, any kind of uh, career change and transition. And the one of the things that I think people don't emphasize enough in, in interviews is not necessarily their technical expertise, but their ability to be able to bring technical expertise, whether it's theirs or someone else's, to a problem that uh, that that needs to be fixed. And so, you know, it, it might be great. So, if I have a problem with uh, data visualization, for instance, I have something where I need to do some data viz work. Uh, I could go in and learn a program and spend X amount of hours learning that program, or I could, you know, use my network and, um, you know, find somebody who is the subject matter expert, you know, and bring them on board to, you know, or leverage them to be able to do that, or even better, uh, <laughs> steal somebody else's work internally and that they've already done that kind of mirrors what I'm doing and just, you know, learn enough to be able to tweak it uh, to, to get it to serve my purposes. So I think people tend to focus a little bit too much on the ability to um, be an individual contributor and a technical expert, and they don't focus enough on their ability to be able to bring uh, the best possible resources together, which is very important at a super large level, like a, you know, a PwC, an Accenture, IBM, any of those really large places, these are, you know, hundreds of thousands of people work at these places, right? So somebody there is really good at whatever, you know, whatever issue you're trying to fix. Um, I, another thing is time management and calendaring. Um, I, I, I don't always succeed at this, but I try to be pretty, uh, pretty good and pretty ruthless with my calendar and stick to things. Um, that, that is, I would say the biggest thing as far as organization and just staying on top of, um, staying on top of projects and, you know, program management and things such as that. Um, so, you know, really, you know, living and dying by your calendar between, you know, not all the time, but at least between nine to five or whatever your working hours are. Um, and then, the other skill that I think uh, really helps me in my day-to-day -day is I, I, I take the time to ask a lot of questions to make sure that I am fully understanding um, what's, what is being asked of me and also to make sure that as I'm communicating that back to somebody, they're, they're checking the box that that's exactly what they're looking for because <clears throat> oftentimes in projects that, that you will do, you'll be working between several different layers of individuals and you will be, um, you will be getting, you will be getting inputs um, and data and, you know, and suggestions and all these other, all these other components that come into to a build. You'll be getting all this stuff from, you know, very disparate groups. And while they might be in the same company or they might be in your company, uh, you don't know who's talking to who and how aligned they are. And so being able to, to listen and being, you know, as a management consultant, I think part of the big thing that you do is really serve as that liaison between all these other, 
all these other technical groups and, you know, the client and capabilities and you're knowledgeable enough about what's going on in, uh, in with technology and within their industry and things like that, that you can bring your flavor to that and coalesce all those things together in something that's going to be successful and ultimately profitable for the client. So um, really listening, being a good, a good kind of, you know, a good conduit for that information and being a good, you know, being a good stopping point uh, for all that stuff is, is very important. Make sure people know uh, the calendaring stuff is, is, is critical though. I, 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 that I can't stress enough. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you so much, Nate. That's a wonderful, wonderful advice. And as we are reaching the top of the hour, uh, so here's my final question for you. And definitely you have provided a very, very thorough information on how to search for the job, how you can crack the interviews and what skills are required. Uh, what other advice or is there any other advice do you have for all the management consultant aspirants to be successful in their career? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I definitely do. Um, I, I am a very... Uh, I'm a very firm believer of impressions. So uh, I'm, uh, for those of you that might have known him, I'm a huge fan of like Daniel Kahneman and and some of uh, some of the work he's done and everything. And the I, I feel that it is very important to manage the impressions that you give people, and that is something that is important once you are hired, and it's also important to do prior to being hired, um, especially at higher level positions. Uh, you are, you know, if you're coming in from industry and, you know, you're, you're coming in from industry, you have experience and everything else, but you're not alone. You're not the only person that is, you know, that comes from that industry. You're not the only person with that experience. And so, you know, there is, you need to keep in mind that a, you know, a, a managing director, a senior manager, um, is going to be selling you to a client and you need to put forth the best possible impression, uh, not just for you to get the job, but, um, as you work, as you start interviewing or you start making the way up past the, you know, the analyst and, and consulting consultant level, once you start getting into the manager level stuff, you need to make it clear to the people that are, you are interviewing that you are an easy sell to the client for, you know, a thousand dollars an hour or whatever they're billing you at. Right. So you need to make it easy for them to say, you know, wait, why am I paying, you know, why am I paying a thousand dollars an hour for, for Nate? You know, well, let me tell you about Nate. You know, Nate's got an MBA, he's got finance concentrates, he's worked in the industry for X amount of years. And then the next part of that is when you show up, you need to look that part. And I think this is something that is also overlooked quite a bit. <clears throat> um, this is not a popular opinion, but it is mine. I think business casual is hack. And I, whenever I am on a client site, I am wearing a suit, I am wearing a tie. Um, I try to look as professional and as much the part of the person that is getting paid the amount of money that I am getting paid, um, what they would expect to see in that. And I, while that doesn't cover up for ineptitude, um, it does gloss over the initial kind of chafing a lot of times that a client is going to, is going to, um, is going to run into when they are, you know, when they're looking at your timesheet and they're wondering why they're paying so much for you. Um, you know, it, it's very important to look the part. It is, there is a, there is a push within firms and obviously different companies have different cultures. I understand that, but, uh, if, you know, make sure you are looking the part and you are, you are being that person that can be easily sold to a client because that ultimately is what you're there for. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I would say too is um, don't be afraid uh, in meetings and you know, both when you're in, um, when you're in interviews uh, or anything else, don't be afraid to ask questions. 
and um, don't be afraid to to punch up. There's there's a lot to be said about the kind of vague term um, executive presence, and from what I can tell, that basically means you're not afraid to ask questions, you're not afraid to state your opinion. Obviously, you want to do it tactfully, you want to do it appropriately, and you don't want to come off as abrasive. But um, if you've got a suggestion and you've got something that uh, that you think is going to benefit the, the client, then you need to let them know about that. Um, you need to bring it up. And that goes also towards uh, failures that are going to happen um, because projects fail, problems come up, things don't work the way they should. Um, those, you know, those need to be owned. You need to show responsibility for those and push through those problems, do your best to rectify them if possible, um, but make sure that you are being honest with yourself, your client, and you know, and your management team about what and how things are going. That is awesome. So thank you, thank you so much, Nate, for sharing all your experience, advice, and insights. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't say how how important it was for everyone. For myself, I was always a technology consulting guy, and getting this perspective of management consulting. It's a great learning for me, like a very, very productive one hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, awesome. I'll take two, just two minutes uh, to introduce our attendees with our platform more and how they can make best use of it. One second. Okay, so the problem that we are trying to solve at High Counselor is that most of the job seekers they today struggle to get job because of the three major reasons. First is that they don't have the connection with the company insiders, which Nate mentioned at the beginning, how they uh, you should network and ask for the referral. Second is they have limited information about the company, and third, they're unprepared for the interview. To overcome all these three problems, uh, High Counselor provide a very crisp and a fast solution. And what you can do is you can simply log on, suppose if you want to get a job in LinkedIn, you can simply log into High Counselor website or a mobile application, search for someone currently working at your dream company, and you can immediately book a phone or an email appointment to get your questions answered, to get yourself prepared for the interview, uh, or maybe sometime to get a referral. We have counselors from more than 80 companies on our platform. There are about 150 plus counselors. Uh, so if you are targeting your career in product, technology, and consulting sector, uh, we definitely have your dream company up here on our platform. So feel free to check out our platform and all the companies up there. We have conducted more than 60 plus webinars until now. And uh, in the last one hour, you must have realized how valuable and the information these informative these webinars are. So definitely check out our YouTube platform uh, for all the webinar video recordings. Uh, and yeah, this webinar recording will be there in the next few days. So definitely subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. It'll be great if you can share a few good words about High Counselor in your network so that your friends can also know about it. They can also attend our free webinars and get benefit from our services. Uh, just after this webinar, we'll send you a brief survey so that we can get to know what else we can improve and that we can provide you the best experience. Also, we'll inform you about all the future webinars. Plus, we'll send you a brief message that if you want to share with your friends, that'll be very helpful. Again, thank you so much, Nate, for your time, for sharing all the wonderful information. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.